I'm now speaking with Mr. Gary Scott, who is the president of Bombardier Commercial Aerospace. And Mr. Scott, maybe we can get a an update on the C-Series program while you're at ISTAT today. Sure, I just gave an update to uh, all the attendees and uh, we're a little over uh, two and a half years into this program uh, with uh, it's a total of five and a half years. And so we've now reached a point where we've completed our joint definition phase. Uh, we've uh, produced our demonstrators for the wing, for the fuselage, um, for the uh, new metallics, for the new uh, composites, and uh, and also the uh, we've had the first engine to test completed with over 200 hours. So we're right on schedule. We're uh, uh, headed towards uh, EIS the latter part of uh, 2013. The, the, the industry is scuttlebutt about running six months late. Any comments on that? We're right on track. Uh, I think uh, everybody expects uh, airframe manufacturers to be late uh, these days. So as I said just a moment ago, we, we purposely set out uh, a schedule that's five and a half years. That was a year and a half longer than what Boeing had originally on the 787. Of course, they're now three years late. So we have a much more prudent uh, schedule, time to evaluate the new technologies, and uh, that allows us to, uh, to be on schedule and deliver what we advertise in this new game-changing product uh, on schedule. The food chain, the, 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 the supply chain, a lot of people have also made comments about it's stretched out, but Bombardier, um, and I spoke with Mr. Martel about this about a week ago, you guys have been at this a lot longer than probably most people realize. Yeah, exactly. So. In terms of the uh, supply chain management and the overall supply chain uh, integration, uh, there's probably uh, three reasons why we uh, should be able to do this uh, uh, maybe better than Boeing. The first one is what you just cited, that uh, we've actually been at this a uh, uh, much longer. We started in the early 90s with the Global Express. Uh, we used it on our new uh, Challenger 300. We used it on our uh, CRJ. Uh, 700, 900 products, so, uh, so we uh, are more experienced. We had the same issues early on, but we learned from those issues. And, uh, and so uh, I think uh, we're uh, maybe better at it than uh, Boeing was. You know, the second one is uh, we're obviously uh, parlaying a lot of the uh, lessons learned from uh, not only our, uh, our experience, but our suppliers on the uh, uh, their recent, from their recent experience on 787, A380s, uh, etc. And then a third one, I would just say that uh, while Boeing was on, say, the bleeding edge of technology, you know, we're using all the same new technologies in our aircraft, but we're more on the leading edge. Uh, they, they plowed the way. In terms of the environment in which your airplane is going to be operating, you, you've got competition underneath you, so to speak, in terms of size. The, particularly the Brazilians, and you've got obviously Airbus and Boeing on the upper end. Could you explain how you're going to be dealing with the competitive uh, pressures in, in campaigns? Well, again, I think the, uh, the, the uh, way to deal with that is to produce the game-changing, optimal aircraft for this segment, uh, the 100 to 150 uh, aircraft segment. So as Air, Air, uh, Embraer kind of pokes their nose over the 100 seat threshold, uh, they really don't have an optimal airplane to uh, compete with us. And uh, as Boeing and Airbus come down from above, it's the same issue. Uh, you know, for example, on the uh, new A320neo, if uh, you looked at that in an A319 uh, configuration, which is what we compete against, even though we're uh, big fans of their selection of the uh, geared turbofan, they uh, still have an airplane that weighs 12,000 pounds more than a C-Series uh, CS300. So uh, it's just simple physics. Uh, you cannot produce the same uh, fuel burn economics that uh, a much lighter, much newer, much uh, more modern uh, C-Series uh, can produce. The 12,000 pounds, what is that roughly equivalent to in seat capacity? 50 seats? Uh, it's, uh, well... Every seat is, uh, these days, we use, uh, say, 225 pounds a seat. That's for, the, uh, for each uh, person. 
So if you think of it in terms of uh, you know payload, I guess what is that? Uh, it's twenty uh, seats. Yeah. So, so tw if we look at twenty seats, so for 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 Neo, a three ninety Neo to be even with a CS three hundred, it has to have it, it basically takes a hit of twenty seats. Yeah, that's uh, I gotta do my math now. So, well, I'm, the reason I'm asking the question yeah. is how is it that they possibly could make an airplane? as the way they describe it, that competes. I mean, when you, when you hear them talk about them selling the 319 and that they've closed the gap, you know, how much of a gap can they have closed? Well, the, the, uh, they're, they're not really closing the gap on the 319. They're closing the gap on the 320. So they're making a better 320 and a better 321, uh, where uh, their uh, aircraft is, is more optimal, just like Boeing is more optimal, 737-800, 737-900. So they're improving their relative position against the Boeing products, but they still have uh, a significant disadvantage against uh, the C-Series because uh, it just carries, uh, the Classic carries 8,000 pounds more weight than, uh, uh, than the C-Series, and now because of the larger engine and the structural, uh, the strengthening they have to put into the uh, wing, it's going to go up to 12,000 pounds. So it doesn't compete very effectively uh, against uh, the C-Series. It's a, uh, the Classic was, uh, in terms of fuel burn, was is 22% uh, cent worse than the C-Series. Uh, with the Neo, with the new uh, geared turbofan, they can, they can get about 10% of that back, but they're still 12% worse. And so it's a product that's going to be, uh, have about a third the benefit if you put it in terms of cash operating costs uh, than the uh, C-Series and it's going to be three years later because they won't do a 319 until at least uh, 2017. So for, for an airline looking at that capacity, that size then, waiting for a 319 Neo is actually quite a hard thing to do given for example if oil stays anywhere close to these levels for, for a sustained period. No, that's right. I think uh, there's no reason to, uh, to wait. Uh, you know, I think uh, I think the, the bottom line here is every segment of the market needs an optimal solution. So below 100 seats, it's a uh, Bombardier, Ember Air have uh, you know good solutions really in their four breast aircraft. Above 150 seats, uh, Boeing and Airbus have good uh, solutions with their six abreast aircraft. Well, what the world needs is an optimal solution for 100 to 150 seats, and uh, and that's what the C series is all about. Uh, so uh, nobody is going to be producing a better airplane or, or anything nearly as good in uh, the foreseeable future. So no need to wait. You mentioned an interesting statistic in your speech about that being not only the sweet spot but a huge proportion of commercial flights. Yeah, exactly. The uh, what people don't realize that today in the 100 to 150 seat segment there is uh, roughly uh, just under 6,000 airplanes operating. And, uh, and actually in the United States, that size airplane accounts for uh, 4,000 departures every single day. So it is still uh, the most uh, used configuration of all aircraft in the industry today. Um, and it's not likely to change in the foreseeable future. It's just that the value of the airplanes below 150 seats is not nearly as high as the value, you know, above 150, and especially as you get into the big, uh, you know, twin aisle and uh, and even uh, jumbo jets. Uh, so um, our market is uh, 600 billion out of the 3.6 trillion. You know, we're delighted with 600 billion. It's 6,700 airplanes. Uh, that's uh, a market that, uh, that Boeing and Airbus have tried to capture with less than optimized solutions in the past because nobody else has been there. And now we're there, so um, most likely they will focus above 150 seats for the balance of the $3 trillion at stake. The, the 100 seater market has been a bit of a no man's land for a long time, hasn't it? Not really. Um, what, if you go back and look at the history of the 100 seater, it, it it really started in the uh, late 60s 
with the uh, DC nines in the in the first seven three seven, one hundreds two hundreds, and uh, and so the uh, you know DC nines evolved eventually into the MD uh, series. Uh, uh, the Fokker was uh, came in there, um, and uh, it's uh, so it's always been there. It's just that Boeing and Airbus sort of uh, Boeing grew out of it, and Airbus never started there. They kind of backed into it with A318, which is a which is a very very inefficient airplane, and uh, and uh, never really uh, sold many units. But the market is served. Like I said, there's 6,000 airplanes flying in that segment today. So to, to suggest that it's it's a no man's land is uh, is uh, is wrong because it's it really. Uh, there's a large market segment. It's just that the big guys, Boeing and Airbus, decided not to pr produce uh, optimal solutions for that. And uh, the one, the people who had uh, been serving that market segment for one reason or another uh, went out of business. Is your is your sense is your sense of it that Boeing and Airbus are going to continue with their new their new products to go up market? If uh, history is any. Uh, clue, absolutely. So Boeing made the 737. They've reinvented it twice. So I talked about the 100-200s. They reinvented it the first time when they did the 300s and the 400s. So they basically put a new engine, new wing, and made it bigger. And then, uh, and then when they reinvented it again in the late 90s with the 737 uh, Next Generation, they uh, essentially pr produced an all-new airplane and made it bigger still with the 737-800, sort of the optimized uh, segment. So Boeing knows how to build big airplanes, and they're good at it. And so uh, they've moved up in that segment. That's where they can make money, and there's a big market there. And they've, and they've said, we'll serve this lower end with our suboptimal airplanes. Nobody's been there. So they'll uh, continue, I think, to with that uh, migration and of course Airbus has always been. Thank you so much for the interview. Thank you.